I'd like to talk about the idea of an edge being a bridge and so in order to discuss this I want to take a look at an example graph so that it becomes clear. If we look at this graph and we look at all of the edges in the graph we'll see that some of the edges have different properties than the others. So one property that we're looking at right now is if we take a look at a particular edge and we then imagine the graph without that edge. So if this is the edge E and we think about the graph without the edge E, now we can see that it used to have one connected component and after we remove the edge E it will be disconnected. It will have has, uh, has two connected components. components. And similarly if we try this with a different edge, so maybe this one over here, then G, the original graph, without that edge, so including the blue edge, but without the green edge, it will also have two components. And so what is happening is we notice that if we are to remove either this edge E or this edge, maybe I'll call it E prime, so it's clear that it's a different one, either one of these edges, if we were to remove it, it would disconnect the graph. And that's different from the other edges. If you take a look at any one of the other edges, like this edge here, if you remove this edge the remaining graph is still connected. So it's only the case that you can disconnect the graph when you remove the edge E or edge E prime. And that is what we mean by a bridge. Now if the original graph already was disconnected then a bridge edge is simply going to create more components. So let's maybe take a look at such an example. Okay, so let's say this is our new graph G and we can notice that the number of connected components of G right now is 2. This is a new example. And if we take a look at any edge here, well if we remove this edge it still uh, has two components. If we remove this edge it still has two components, etc. Any edges along these cycles. However, if we remove this edge right here, which I'll call F, if we take G and remove that edge F and count the number of components, well take a look. We're going to have this four cycle, this three cycle, and a single isolated vertex. So it's going to have three components. Um, whereas up here our original graph G had exactly one component in this graph here. So a connected graph would become disconnected if you remove a bridge edge and a graph with that is already disconnected with some number of connected components will increase in the number of connected components if you remove a bridge edge. So now let's officially define what we mean by a bridge. So an edge E of a graph is a bridge of that graph if removing that edge creates more connected components than were in the original graph. In other words, the number of connected components of G without the edge E is more than the number of connected components of G. And in particular, in particular, if G is already originally connected, then an edge is a bridge if and only if removing that edge creates a disconnected graph. So let's just take a look at one more example like this. Suppose our graph is some kind of cycle and then attached to one of the vertices is another vertex and maybe another vertex. So let's say this is our graph. If we remove any one of these three edges on the cycle it will not disconnect the graph. However, removing either one of these edges would disconnect the graph. So these two edges are bridge edges. Um, as a particular example, if you look at this edge here, which is edge E, let's call it, and let's say this vertex is U and V, it's important to notice that once edge E is removed, U is going to be in one of the connected components, whereas V will be in the another connected component. So we should actually phrase that carefully. Let's say E equals UV, that's some edge. It is a bridge if and only if U and V are in different connected components of G without E. 
makes sense because if you remove the edge that joins u and v and that in doing so connect disconnects the graph then u and v will be in different connected components so I'll just highlight one of the connected components would be here and the other one would be over here and of course this can be done similarly if you were to consider the edge f maybe the f goes from v to w let's call it then again if you were to remove f w and v would be in different connected components of the graph once f is removed now you've probably observed from the examples that we've done that the bridge edges cannot lie on a cycle and in fact that is our first theorem so the theorem says an edge is a bridge if and only if it is not on any cycle in the graph so let's take a look at the proof which is quite straightforward suppose we want to prove this direction first which means we want to show that if an edge is a bridge then it does not lie on any cycle of the graph well what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the contrapositive contrapositive and that would state that an edge E which lies on a cycle is not a bridge so what we want to show is that if E if E is on a cycle then E is not a bridge is not a bridge because the contrapositive of an if-then statement is not the conclusion implies not the hypothesis so E is on a cycle implies E is not a bridge that's what we want to show and that's not too difficult to show because in fact think about it if E is on a cycle so say E is on a cycle on a cycle some cycle C so imagine that it looks like this here's your edge E and it's on some cycle C now in the graph when we remove the edge E there is still going to be a path from the end vertex of E to the other end vertex of E which is call them U and V there will still be a path from U to V so in the graph without the edge E U and V are in the same connected component are in the same connected component this is where E is the edge that goes between U and V so U and V are in the same connected component and we saw earlier I'll just scroll up so that we can see it we observed that if an edge is a bridge then its end vertices must be in different connected components of the graph once that edge is removed so down here when we know that the end vertices of that edge are in the same connected component this tells us that this edge E is not a bridge therefore E is not a bridge so we have succeeded in proving the contrapositive and therefore we've proven this forward direction now for the other direction let's take a look at that our aim is to show now that if E is not on any cycle then E is a bridge so for that statement the contrapositive would be if E is not a bridge then E lies on a cycle so we're again going to use the contrapositive contrapositive but now the contrapositive of this direction is going to be E not a bridge implies that E is on a cycle in fact we've stated the theorem as an edge is a bridge if and only if it is not on any cycle but we see now by using both of these contrapositive statements we could have phrased this as E is not a bridge if and only if E lies on a cycle it's just that we prefer a statement which defines exactly what we mean by being a bridge 
So let's go ahead and prove this statement, that if E is not a bridge, then it must lie on a cycle. So E is not a bridge, so here we have E, which has n vertices U and V, is not a bridge. And that means then that in the graph without the edge E, there is a path. Is a path from U to V. Because this is a bridge if and only if removing the edge puts them in different connected components. Since that's not the case, it's not a bridge, removing the edge means that they are in the same connected component. U and V are in the same connected component. U and V are in the same component. And that's exactly why we know that there is a path from U to V. Let's call this path P. It takes us from U to V. We don't know the length. Well, now consider adding back the edge E. Here we have, in G without E, we have a path P that takes us from U to V. But in the original graph G, we also have this edge E. And that means that the, in the original graph, in G, if you take the edge E followed by the path P, that will take you from U to V via the edge, and then from V back to U via the path. And so this tells us that in G, there is a cycle, is a cycle that contains contains edge E. And that's exactly what we were trying to show, that if E is not a bridge, then E is on a cycle. So now we've successfully proved that E is not a bridge if and only if E is on a cycle, and therefore our theorem holds that an edge is a bridge if and only if it does not belong to any cycle.